Live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hi, welcome back. We're at the MGM Grand at Las Vegas, Nevada. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We're at Splunk.conf 2014, the fifth year of Splunk's user conference. Over 4,000 people here. Splunkers, customers, partners, prospects, press, analysts, everyone that wants to learn more about what's going on with the latest releases. For Splunk, they've outgrown the, uh, the prior venue and had to move over here to the MGM Grand. So we're theCUBE, this is our third year here. We're excited to be here because it's got great insight and it's an exciting, growing company. We're joined in this segment by my co-host, Jeff Kelly. Yeah, I'm Jeff Kelly from Wikibon and we are joined by Lena Joshi, who's the Senior Director, Infrastructure and Operations and Marketing at Splunk. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, Jeff and Jeff. Right, Cube alumni, Absolutely. one of our uh, women in tech, which we always love to get. So, Lena, tell us about your impressions of the show. This is uh, by far the biggest dot .conf we've seen. Uh, a lot of energy. Um, how's the show going for you? The show has been uh, simply fantastic. The amount of excitement around, uh, you know, just inc people increasing their usage of Splunk, uh, trying out different new things, uh, exchanging ideas, uh, has been has been fantastic. Um, so far, I would say the highlights of the show have been, um, uh, you know, our keynotes, uh, the security keynote mm. that put the fear of God in everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> the the customers that spoke at our main keynote, uh, especially uh, Snehal Antani from GE was and fantastic. and uh, the Coca Cola uh, platform architect and right, the Red Hat, right. Red Hat CIO, they were just amazing, phenomenal stories, and they made quite the impact with the audience. Absolutely. So. Uh, we want to get into some of the announcements Splunk has made, but why don't you remind our audience of your role as Senior Director of Infrastructure and Operations Marketing? Uh, so I run Solutions Marketing at Splunk uh, for Splunk in IT Operations, Applications Management, and Application Development. So generally I just shorten it to Solutions Marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, a lot of announcements, uh, one of them of course being Splunk 6.2, the, you know, the core enterprise platform. Uh, and we've talked to a lot of customers here on theCUBE, and one of the things they've pointed out and that they really like about the uh, new, new um, release is the addition of some of the more self-service style tools. Talk a little bit about your, the kind of the philosophy behind 6.2 and maybe detail some of those features. Absolutely. So we started, down, start, started on this journey uh, uh, at least a, a few months ago or a year ago when we, when we introduced Pivot and data models. And the whole idea, the philosophy behind that was to make uh, the data that in Splunk more accessible to a broader number of users. And with this release, 6.2, we're, we're fr fundamentally just c uh, amazingly increasing the number of users that can interact with machine data that's sitting in Splunk. Uh, you can type in any search. Uh, it can be simply star search, star error, anything. And uh, on the results, you can instantly pivot. So, you, so now you get like an Excel-like interface on just plain old machine data. Uh, what this does, it, ta it takes the uh, it takes uh, takes the work that somebody has to do to put the mach machine data in a usable form for a business, non-technical person to understand it, and just present it to them in a much more easier interface. Mm -hmm. In a way that they understand, everyone understands Excel. It's interesting. Excel has been one of those things where it's been, you know, it's kind of a, people have a love-hate relationship with it. It's everyone's favorite BI tool. Mm -hmm. Whether they love it or they hate it, that's it's, what they use yeah, for BI. It's the most widely deployed BI tool on the planet. You know all its flaws and all, but it's, it gets the job done. Um, right. It's not always the prettiest, but it gets the job done. So talk about why it was important for you to extend Splunk to more users. I mean, obviously from, from a business perspective, more users equals more revenue, that's great, but, but at a more philosophical level, what, what, what was the thinking behind extending um, Splunk to you know, that more non-technical person? The great, great question, because this is so ingrained in, in Splunk that the machine data that you're indexing within Splunk is not just relevant for one particular use case. It is relevant for a wide variety of use cases. It's relevant for operations, troubleshooting, security, and it is also an important indicator of what exactly is going on in the environment. How are users behaving? How are systems behaving? Mm -hmm. Once you're able to harness the power of this data, you're able to extract insights like XYZ features that I'm offering to my users are more popular than those other ABC features that I was 
spending a lot of time working on. Right. Uh, you get product analytics, you get user analytics, usage analytics, and that, that's really what makes uh, the data more powerful. It really delivers value to our customers. So it's, it's, all this time, it's been about making sure you extract all the value that you can out of machine data. Yeah, we, and we've, we've talked about that with a num number of guests, that basically the same data, depending on the context, uh, can provide uh, insight into lots of different processes. Absolutely. We talked a little bit about uh, off camera, and I want to kind of revisit it. You talked about really um, enabling the technical folks to really get more involved in business cases and to show and demonstrate what's in the data to their business leaders. At the same time, there's a move to getting the business people that are not the technical folks, the ability for them to have access to the data and for them to massage the data. So it's, it's kind of two different paths to the same journey. Or if you can speak a little bit about your philosophy in terms of the solution design. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, if you've, if you've downloaded Splunk or if you've played with it on your own, you know that uh, it's, it's a very, very easy tool once you, once you get what, what you want to do it. But really, uh, behind the scenes, once organizations start adding more and more data to Splunk, it, be, it really becomes a platform. And uh, the value, uh, value is extracted from all this data by being able to make correlations across different types of data. Uh, and once you have all those correlations in one place, um, you're not only solving your IT operations problems, you're solving application management problems, you're solving uh, business uh, decision making type of problems. Uh, with, um, with, with the introduction of these new features in, in 6.2, um, we are, as, as you mentioned, as you said, making it fundamental, taking two different paths, to, two different approaches to making the, that machine data more usable. The, uh, the, the technical people, the people who are Splunk experts, they, uh, they can now work on more advanced problems and leave the self-service, like here's, you know, here's a set of analytics, if you want to change it or do anything else with it, feel free to do it. So they can empower more users within the organization so that they're not the bottleneck. And on the other, uh, on the other side, the users that are typically you know, wanting, okay, I need this report to look like this and I want to run this other query and slice this data this way now because I think that's more relevant. They, right. can, do, they can do more with, with, with that data. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, and then the other challenge that you guys are, are giving yourselves is really the delivery across a number of different platforms, right? So you can, you can get the Enterprise Edition and install it on-prem, you've got a cloud solution, you partner with AWS, so, in terms of a solution set, you're supporting kind of a number of different flavors of the same application. Talk about, uh, about kind of those challenges and really um, philosophically why you guys are supporting that type of delivery model. That one is easy. Uh, the, the easy answer is uh, we want our users to be able to consume our product however they want, wherever they want, in whatever model that's very, very convenient for them to use. And that's, that's the reasoning behind Splunk Enterprise, Splunk Cloud, our integration with Amazon Web Services. Where the users are, that's where, that's where we want to be. Uh, that's also the motivation behind Splunk Mint. Uh, our mobile intelligence product, if you if you want to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, because I think that was another announcement here at the yeah, show. Yeah, I think a big announcement and you know plays right into, to some extent, to the whole DevOps conversation we've been having about using uh, data coming from your applications to continually improve those applications. Um, and this uh, Splunk Mint comes from the BugSense acquisition. Talk a little bit about, um, maybe a little bit about that acquisition and, and, and the role Splunk Mint plays uh, with your customers. Absolutely. So yes, for, uh, for our viewers, if you remember, we acquired a company called BugSense uh, last year. Um, and what we released this year is, is a, our first set of products based on that acquisition. So we released uh, Splunk Mint Express, which is a major upgrade from what BugSense was. And what it does is, um, as you can see, everybody has like hundreds of uh, well, not hundreds, but I sometimes feel like I have a hundred <laughs> mobile devices. <laughs> Certainly a hundred passive messages, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what did I check my Twitter, my Facebook, my email, my That's LinkedIn? Right. <laughs> yes, so yes, I might have a hundred mobile applications just running <laughs> on my on your variety phone. of mobile <laughs> devices. And uh, the, the key thing about the applications is you never know, uh, and one airline that shall not be named, but you never know <laughs> when that application is going to hang right right when you press the book it now button, <laughs> right? Like, did my credit card get charged? Did my flight get changed? Like, 
Uh, anyway, so it is meant uh, as more and more people move towards the uh, towards using applications on mobile devices, mm -hmm. we want to be right there with them. Uh, the providers of these applications need visibility into when the applications are crashing, which versions are crashing, mm -hmm. when is the user not able to complete a transaction, like I wasn't, and uh, when <laughs> <laughs> when did the network get in the way? Mm -hmm. When was it the applications fall? Like this type of visibility is really critical. And particularly in a world like this, where if all your users are on mobile devices and you're not answering the question or not, not finishing mm -hmm. the transaction, they might move on to, to executing it somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? The, uh, customer lost is revenue lost. Right, and it's the, the, talk about the real-time component, because it's one thing to get a report a month later that you had all these issues with customers not being able to complete their transaction, it's another thing to get that in real time and say, okay, how can we respond to that person? Or at least fix the application so when they try again in an hour, it works. That's, that's a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic uh, question. Also, uh, so with, uh, with something like Splunk Mint Express, you instrument your mobile application with something like one line of code. Uh, very, very easy, uh, not a lot of overhead or, at all. And so for the developers of mobile applications, once uh, users are using these applications, they can just log into a cloud service, which is the Splunk Mint Express service, mm -hmm. and immediately see uh, you know, uh, where, which applications are, are experiencing what errors, what crashes, by which version, by which device, uh, which transactions are not getting executed, when is the network the problem, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, Mint Express um, is, is a cloud service and can be accessed uh, you know, uh, very easily. Uh, we think there's more value to this mobile application data. And the extra value, the extra step that we're introducing here is uh, we introduce Splunk Mint and uh, Enterprise as a beta version, basically. Mm -hmm. um, we introduce the beta of Splunk Mint Enterprise where you can connect this mobile application data now to all the other data in Splunk. So it includes an integration with Splunk. What is the value of this? Well, uh, your mobile application data is, it does not exist in a silo by itself. Uh, yes, you can get user analytics about what people are doing with your mobile application with Mint Express, but really what we want to enable with Splunk Mint Enterprise is the, is the cross-tier correlation. So from an operations perspective, if you want to see my mobile application is not performing well because I didn't provision enough capacity or my web servers weren't responding or my backend system crashed, you want to see all that data in one place so that you can figure out which thing is causing um, problems or not living up to its SLA. The second really, uh, it's almost like the, 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 uh, the cherry on top is, um, is the omni-channel analytics piece. You're getting user and usage mm -hmm. analytics from uh, you know, the mobile application, so you can see what users are doing. But you can now correlate with Splunk Enterprise. Let's say you have data from your web servers also. Let's say you have data from other channels in Splunk Enterprise. You can correlate all these pieces together. What do you get from this? You can see, oh, my users started this, uh, started to do this on the desktop, and then they stopped, and then they moved to the mobile application to complete this transaction. Like, why is that? And one of our customers actually started doing this, a customer called ADP, I think you interviewed them last year. Yep. Um, they were the ones who, who, who were really pioneering this use case even without, without, uh, uh, without Mint Express or Mint Enterprise being there, is they were collecting information from all channels and looking across, across the board and mm -hmm. seeing, well, how can I optimize this? This feature is popular on the desktop, that feature is popular on the mobile, uh, how do I optimize, mm -hmm. right, and, right. and uh, it, it can be invaluable, especially when you're running promotions, running deals, and so on. Well, we, we talk about the consumerization of IT all the time on theCUBE, and, and really what that means is people's expectation of the way applications uh, are supposed to act. And, and if I'm on Chrome, if I go from my, my, uh, my home computer, I walk out the door, I open it up on my tablet, I expect it all basically to be the same, to have all the same access. I think of the old Sunray systems back in the day where you, you stuck your card in wherever you were in the world that it, it lit up the desktop right from where you were. So people expect that behavior. You know, They want it all to be the same and don't really think through what the potential technical challenges are of trying to deliver the same experience on this little thing versus you know, a big screen or a tablet regardless of networks and everything else. So talk about you know, your guys' approach to that and then the other piece of that is really this expanding uh, population of data sets that you guys can now leverage and pull in and, and, and that just continues to grow That's and right. add more flavor, more color, hopefully more 
uh, relevance, uh, accuracy, higher confidence levels in those correlations that you guys are able to find. Absolutely, and uh, just along those lines, about last month or so, we announced the Splunk app for Stream, which collects wire data. And wire data is the information that applications transmit over the network, and it can be an extremely important uh, indicator of response times, um, uh, you know, uh, business activity, uh, how long is something taking to complete uh, its action, uh, all of those, uh, how long are transactions taking as an example, all of those things are, uh, can be extracted from your wire data. And with the addition of Splunk app for stream, uh, we are now in a position to collect tons and tons of this wire data, not just from uh, infrastructure that is under your control, but your, uh, you may have virtual machines running in the cloud somewhere, you can drop the stream uh, mm -hmm. modular input onto these virtual machines, and now you can collect data even without access to network taps and span ports. You can do both. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can do the span port network tap thing, but you can also do, uh, you can also do it the agent way where you're dropping an agent onto uh, virtual machines that are running in a cloud and simply collecting data about uh, why, uh, what's being tr transmitted over the wire. Yeah, and you even do mainframes too, right? So you get you, you go from the Twitter stream to the mainframe stream and everything in between. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Very good. So, talk a little bit about um, you know from a, from a marketing perspective. One of the things that struck us uh, as we've had conversations over the last two days is, is a potential challenge for Splunk is that because of your approach, it, it could be a marketing challenge, because you know, are you a, are you an application company, are you a platform company? And we're hearing the word platform much more. Um, how do you approach that from a marketing perspective, telling the story of Splunk in a way that both your customers understand, um, you know, partners that understand? What's, how, what's your approach to messaging uh, around Splunk? I think the main message around Splunk is always start with the data. Mm -hmm. uh, data is, is, uh, is our big differentiator, our ability to ingest data from any source in any format, uh, be able to correlate things across different types of data, and not, we're not restricted to machine data. It's, it's kind of fantastic that we can uh, combine machine data with structured data mm -hmm. for those uh, very high level insights. And when you use data to tell the story, I think the answer becomes very, very simple. It's, uh, it's, if, if you have data about solving a problem, Splunk can solve it. We should have had you on the analyst call, because the, 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 the analysts were confused, right? Because they're saying now you're going from kind of a single, a single app or single solution company, now you're, you're spreading your portfolio broadly. You know, obviously that adds execution difficulty, adds resource complexity. Um, so how, how are you guys sorting all that out as you continue to grow your portfolio? I mean, Again, this is great, always start with the data, so that, that's a nice kind of uh, foundation. If, if you start with the data, then, the, uh, then actually the, uh, the, the story for the customer becomes very easy. You're indexing your data once, the same data is being used for your security use case, the same data is being used for your operations use case, the same data is supporting business decision making. At this point, you're extracting as much value from the data as you possibly can with Splunk. So it makes uh, Splunk adoption easy. It makes, uh, you know, uh, for us, it makes it makes business easy, really, when, when customers can see that much value coming out of their data with the help of Splunk. So that's another big one, right, is we talk about solutions and technology and blah, 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 but really what's most important is what value is being unleashed with the customer, right? That's we had the, right. the guys on earlier talking about the trains and and you know, small increases in efficiency have huge impacts on their maintenance bills, their fuel, fuel bills, et cetera. So I know you get to talk to a lot of customers here at the show and, and otherwise. I wonder if you can share some fun examples of just ridiculous amounts of value extracted with small deltas that they were able to execute with Splunk. Well, I don't know if you've had, uh, if you've had McKinsey from Oscar Insurance talk here. No, I don't think so. Um, well, Oscar Insurance is this very small startup uh, uh, it's a very well-funded startup, but they're fundamentally, um, r uh, you know, changing the approach to insurance. Uh, I think they're going to be a, a really disruptive startup. They have a, they have a small Splunk license, I would say, um, but every single person at Oscar Insurance uses Splunk. Uh, <laughs> I think they're the biggest user of uh, DB Connect, one of our free apps. And, uh, and uh, they have just, even, even the reports that get mailed to their customers about um, which doctors are in your area are powered by Splunk. Mm -hmm. So I would say they're using Splunk for operations, they're using Splunk for, uh, for security, they're using Splunk for compliance, they're using Splunk for reporting. 
they're they're doing good with the <laughs> yeah, I, that's your kind of customer i think right? it speaks to the the work you're doing to make it more accessible to non-technical users and the, the biggest illustration that to me today was I, I forget the guess but they were talking about their biggest user of splunk and their company and the, the, the person's background was uh, you know he it was a non-technical person and you know he had a, a liberal arts degree and I'm thinking now, if you can get you know, somebody Jim. with Jim from Internet. Yeah, if you get somebody with like a, I don't know an English or literature degree uh, from some liberal arts college can can use Splunk. I think you've you've got the market pretty much covered. But I think so. I, you know, and just from my two cents in terms of the marketing message, I love talking about you talking about data first. I wonder it'll be interesting, Jeff, to watch Splunk's marketing and how it may evolve over the next several years because clearly you have big ambitions beyond you know the IT shop, just security. You're looking for much wider use cases. And you know the, the term machine data, I think, is a good one, but it, it could be limiting in that, you're, as you illustrated, you're, you're dealing with customer data as well, and, and customer analytics, you're touching the customer. You're driving business outcomes. Um, so I'll be interested to see if the, if, the, if the marketing shifts a little bit over the next few years as, you, as your footprint expands and as you take on more and more use cases. So just well, my two cents. I'll be back next year, so. All right, we'll talk about <laughs> it. All right, good. Well, uh, th I'll give you the one last, one last uh, exit before we cut out. You already gave me the bumper sticker. I always start with the data. But what are you most excited about? What, what are you waking up every morning just really uh, raring to go? Well, um, there's so many, I mean, now this is the real difficult <laughs> question because there are so many things to be, uh, to be excited about with Splunk. I would say all of our announcements, version 6.2, mobile intelligence, all of those have, uh, have, been, have been really fun announcements and really fun projects to work on. Okay, good. Well, we'll look for some of the secret ones I know you have under the covers for, uh, for next year. So, Lena, thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Rick here you, with, Jeff. with uh, Jeff Kelly. We're on theCUBE. We're at the Splunk.conf 2014, their fifth annual user conference. Third time we've had theCUBE here. Go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, get the smartest people we can find, like Lena, share her insight and knowledge with you. Uh, we'd love to do it. We'll be back with our next segment after this short break. <laughs>